and then people are going to be milling around a little bit. And, and while that's happening, or after a couple minutes, it's going to start to settle down, and you come up. Okay. Okay. And then we'll then you can just sit next to me okay. until it's really quiet. Yeah, this is your. Okay. Okay. Is that cool?
Grace and peace to you. Good morning and welcome. It's good to see you all. A beautiful morning. Um, for those of you who are visiting this morning, we're really happy that you're here. And I want you to know that no matter who you are, no matter where you are on this journey, you are welcome here. This is an open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ. When we say all are welcome, there is no asterisk. There is no exception. You are welcome here exactly as you are. We also welcome those of you watching the service on local television, and we wish you God's peace. We do meet after the service downstairs in Fellowship Hall for a time of refreshment and fellowship. If you're able to stick, stick around a little bit after the service, please join us downstairs. It's a good opportunity to meet uh, each other and, and get to know each other a little bit better. There are a few announcements in the bulletin that I want to bring your attention to. Uh, the first is that our, um, our annual One Great Hour of Sharing offering will be received today. Uh, this, is a, this is an offering that goes towards sustainable development around the world, refugee resettlement around the world, social justice work around the world. This is a very important part of our wider church involvement, so to the extent that you can help uh, with that offering, it will be very much appreciated. Tomorrow's uh, noontime Bible study will, will begin. Uh, we're going to be reading the, the letter of James, so please come at 12 if that's uh, something that appeals to you and that's something that you're able to do. And this week uh, is the week where our photo directory uh, photo shoots will, will happen. Uh, if you have not yet scheduled uh, a time to do that, uh, please do so very soon. You can talk to Pat Chase. I'm sure we can find a way to get you in. It would be great to have everyone in that directory. Okay. So I should just say up front, um, not feeling 100%. Uh, it's probably pretty obvious. Uh, I don't want you to worry about me because that's the main thing. If you do, you won't worship. I'm fine. I'll probably sleep this afternoon, but I'm fine right now. Okay. So I just want you to know that, because otherwise you'll be, you're good enough to worry about these things. All right. So, if I forget like a whole part of the worship service, just flag me. <clears throat> Would you join me now in a time of prayerful silence as we prepare for this time of worship? Please join me in the call to worship. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? One thing I asked of the Lord. 
to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord. And to inquire in God's temple. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord. In the land of the living. Thanks, Joseph. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not let them be afraid. The risen Christ finds you behind closed doors and offers you peace. With faith in God's mercy, let us confess our sins. This is the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. Whatever you have done or failed to do, you are accepted. You are enough. God's strength is found in forgiveness. God's power 
is love for all. By grace, we are renewed and restored, forgiven and loved. Thanks be to God. As the risen Christ greets his disciples with peace. Peace be with you. Let us now rise as we are able and extend the peace of Christ to one another. Peace, Mark. Peace. You don't want this. Thanks, Joes. Don't touch. Let's just chill out, all right? I'll just wait for a little bit. There's always a little bit of extra long to go around. <laughs> Are you ready? All right, go for it, bud. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoined, rejoiced when they, when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to him, them again, Peace be with you. As the Father had sent me, so I sent you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But, when he, but he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails in my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and, through, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Please pray with me. 
Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Where is Thomas? Have you seen Thomas? Has anyone seen Thomas? Why is he not where everybody else is? Do you know someone like Thomas? If you know someone like Thomas, then you know that this is not the first time. There is precedent. This is a pattern. On that first Easter evening, the risen Lord appears to the disciples, to all the disciples, except for Thomas. And if you know Thomas, you are not shocked by that. You are not shocked because whenever Thomas shows up in the Gospel of John, he is not where everybody else is, in more ways than one. Now, it started when, when Jesus learned that his good friend Lazarus had died. And Jesus was determined to pay his respects. Jesus wanted very much to go to the town of Bethany, to Lazarus' home. But at that time, Bethany was not a safe place for Jesus and the disciples to go. Not safe at all. And all the disciples were saying, no, let's not do this. Let's not go there. You can't go there. Well, all the disciples, except for Thomas. Thomas says, let's go. You can imagine the other disciples looking at him, shaking their heads. Really, Thomas? Thomas is not where everybody else is. From the very start, later in the gospel, (coughs) sorry, Jesus was talking with his disciples about his father's house. Right? John 14. How he's going to his father's house. How there's room for all of them in his father's house. How he will meet the disciples in his father's house. And how they will know the way to the father's house. And you know, you know that all the other disciples are listening and doing what grown-ups do when they have no idea what's going on. They're all nodding their heads, kind of squinty, humming a little bit, hmm. Well, everyone's doing that, except for Thomas. Thomas can't take it anymore. He can't take another minute of this wispy cloud talk. And he blurts out, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Which, if you break it down, is a very good question. Thomas is not where everybody else is. So why would it be any different on Easter? I find it perfectly fitting that Thomas is not there when the resurrected Christ appears to the other disciples. And I find it entirely fitting that when Thomas does return, they tell him what happened. Thomas, you won't believe it. We saw the Lord. And I find it entirely fitting that Thomas does not say, wait, let me get this straight. All of you saw him at the same time. Well, that's good enough for me. No, that's not who Thomas is. This is who Thomas is. Unless I see, I will not believe. (laughs) Unless I see, I will not believe. And for that, we call him Doubting Thomas. I think that is a lousy nickname. I'd love to retire it. It sounds like a failing grade, and that's a shame. I mean, it sounds like Thomas has done something wrong, like doubt is bad. Doubt isn't bad. Doubt is an element of faith, says Paul Tillich. Doubt is is, is part of faith. And anyway, why single out Thomas? Let's go a little deeper. I mean, the other disciples did not believe the women. When they return from the empty tomb, all Christ is risen. The disciples did not 
just not believe it either. To them, it was leros. Leros is as close to slang in, in New Testament Greek as we have, which means it's a very popular word in divinity schools. Leros. It's Greek. It means baloney. Bull. Bunk. Balderdash. Poppycock horse feathers. Rubbish, trash, twaddle. That's what it, it means all that. That's Leros. That's what the disciples say to the women's faces. All Thomas says is, it's until I see, I can't believe. At least he's polite. And for that, he becomes a walking, talking, cautionary tale. Do not doubt, only believe. I don't buy it. See, the problem with that cautionary tale is that Jesus comes to Thomas anyway. Which, of course, is not a problem at all. In his life, and in his life after death, Christ shows great love for the one who is not where everybody else is. So the banner of love flies high today. Today, in this passage from John's Gospel, Christ comes to Thomas and meets him exactly where he is. Christ comes to Thomas not because Thomas believes this or that, not because Thomas has earned it, Christ comes to Thomas because Christ loves the one who is not where everybody else is. That's good news for Thomas, and it's good news for us. It's especially good if, if you're feeling not so good. Because there are days when things are not good, when things aren't going so well. Maybe today is one of those days for you. There are days when everyone looks pretty well put together. And you don't feel very well put together. Yeah. I mean, there are days when you're at school and you're in class and, it, and you know everyone in the class seems to be understanding the lesson. And you do not understand the lesson. And you feel a little bit lost. And maybe a little bit more than a little bit lonely. And there are days when, when everybody's singing a happy song and you've got some kind of sadness stuck in your throat. And there are days when it feels like God is far away. And there are even days when you're not, you're not sure if there is a God. And there are days when you visit the widow of a dear friend who tells you what it's like to be strong for two years straight. And who wonders out loud how, how much longer and how much stronger she has to go. And right there, right there and there and there and there and there, Christ is there. Christ shows up, and not in some escapist fantasy kind of way. Jesus is really there, wounds and all. He knows you. He knows you. He loves you, all of you. He's with you. What does that mean? It means there are things in life that we cannot explain. And it means that his face is your face and mine. And his hands are your hands and mine. And his heart is our heart. That makes room for the one who is not where everybody else is. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia and amen.
I believe that the Spirit of God equips us for the work of ministry. It may be one thing for one person and another thing for another person, but God equips all of us to bring something to this shared ministry. This, this offering that we receive every Sunday is, is a symbol of that. It's an expression of that. We give as we're able to give. We draw from the well of blessings that is our well of blessings. And we share it. We share it freely and joyfully. To strengthen our ministry to one another and to many more beyond these walls. So with thanks and praise, let us give as we can as this morning's offering is received. Gracious and loving God, we dedicate this offering with love for you and for our neighbor. This one great hour of sharing. This moment when around the country churches are lifting up plates like these with thanks and praise, hoping that your kingdom comes on earth as it is in heaven. Who lift up plates asking God for you to bless our gifts, and our lives, that they may reflect more clearly pure love, and hope, and peace. So bless this offering, O oh God. Bless our lives. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Sorry. Loving God, 
enliven our imaginations to see what is yet possible. Open our eyes to see more clearly the needs of others. Open our hearts to respond with all the good we can, by all the means we can, in all the places we can, to all the people we can for as long as we ever can. God, help us breathe hope into despair, to be a light for people without jobs, without homes, without enough food. God, help us tend to those who suffer from illnesses of body and mind, those who are nearing the end of this life, and those who walk with loved ones through such difficult days. God, help us care for Ruth Stewart and Betty Kazuba, Jackie Flickinger, Harriet, Jamie, and Jim. And God, help us comfort the families of Joan Henderson and Charles Newton Prouty and John Flickinger. And God, hear our joy for all that is good. Hear our thanks for a beautiful wedding yesterday. We send David and Rachel with our blessing. Hear our thanks for Alice Munson on her birthday celebrating with her the news of the birth of a great-grandchild, Joseph. God, bless him and keep him and shine your face upon him. God, hear our thanks for John Wallace, who also celebrates a birthday today, and for our youth group, for all that they do for others and do so well. And God, we thank you for your love that never leaves us, that finds us where we are. Help us to share it with others as we offer now our most intimate prayer, that sigh too deep for words. Hear us now, O oh God, in this silence of prayer. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, who teaches his disciples to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Hey, Will. Will. Friends, uh, we come to this table again, and I want us to come to this table mindfully. It isn't every church that says what I'm about to say. It isn't every church that says all are welcome at this table. It isn't every church that says from the youngest to the oldest, whether this is your first time in church ever or you grew up here. You are welcome at this table. You have a seat at the table. It's one of the parts of the life of this church that I love. I really love. And I'm happy to share that. It's not my edict. (laughs) It's not my proclamation. It's, It's our church saying all are welcome and we mean it. So we gather again at this table and we share the memory of Christ gathering with his disciples. And as we do, I want us to be grateful. (laughs) I want us to be joyful. Such a privilege and an honor and a joy to to gather here to share this bread and these cups. If you haven't celebrated communion here before, let me just say that that our deacons will, will distribute the plates of bread and then distribute the trays of juice. And if you need gluten free bread, we have that, and the deacons will provide it uh, at request. And all are welcome. All are welcome at this table. And for that, I give thanks to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. <coughs> Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right, always and everywhere, to praise God. You are the source of all life. We thank you for beautiful creation. We thank you for this day to love and be loved. We thank you for this church and for our community. We thank you for real connection and kindness. And God, we thank you for Jesus who meets us where we are, who meets us here where all people have a place at the table. In the sharing of this bread and cup, we remember him. God, bring us into communion. Strengthen us with memories of your provision and the promise of your presence. Through Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. We remember the night that Jesus gathered with his closest friends for the Passover meal. And after they had shared that Passover meal, Jesus took bread and he gave thanks to God for it. He broke the bread and he gave it to them saying, eat this. This is the body. This is my body broken for you. Also after supper, Jesus took the cup and after giving thanks to God for it, he gave it to his friends saying, drink this, all of you. This is the blood of a new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Drink this as often as you do in remembrance of me. Friends, when we gather at this table and we share this meal, we proclaim the mystery of our faith, that Christ has died and Christ is risen and Christ will come again. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, may your spirit bless this bread and fruit of the vine, 
Help us to receive Christ in order to live with Christ's love in all directions. Bless, O oh God, our communion with one another and with you. Help us to abide with you, to stay with you, to remain with you. Bless this meal, we pray. In Christ's name, amen. The bread which we break is the communion of the body of Christ. The cup that we share is the communion of the blood of Christ. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, we're always ready. the body of Christ, the bread of life.
blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Let us pray. Gracious God, in gratitude for this moment, this meal, these people, we give ourselves to you. Ask much of us, expect much from us, enable much by us, encourage many through us. Amen. Go forth to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. The grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.